In this video, we're going to talk about how do you create power even when you're trying to shorten your swing. Ian Nicole asked us a great ass act. Oh, that one's done again. Ian Nicole sent in a great question. He wants to know how does he increase his swing speed or keep the speed the same even though he's trying to shorten his golf swing? So a long golf swing in and of itself isn't bad or good. More interested in the efficiency. Now it's a difficult word to kind of measure, but most often what, especially with him, and actually we spend most of the time shortening a lot of swings with our pro clients because it's more efficient for them. Their misses are narrower. So it's not about for them, especially maximizing distance. Now, if distance is something you absolutely have to maximize, mm -hmm. you don't see a lot of three quarter swings out on the long drive circuit. No. So it, it really depends on what's important to you and your scores. But back to the question, how does he not lose distance from a shorter swing? Again, it goes back to the efficiency and the sequencing. We see a number of golfers, and we're talking about our club level golfers, who are so efficient, inefficient from let's say, really from the start sometimes, but let's say from here up to the top of the swing, so many things are working poorly that the longer they go, the worse it gets. Mm -hmm. Now we can get really good sequencing if you just do, that's why I think the nine to three drill is so popular because it's hard to screw up a sequence this short. We gotta get the sequence fuller to make it useful but you're gonna sequence, and by sequence I mean when the shift occurs, when the rotation occurs, when does the club get back on plane, when is it shallow, all those things become infinitely simpler to do from shorter travel distances. Then once you're doing those things more optimally, you hit the ball farther because you're delivering the sweet spot to the ball more often relative to the longer, looser, more inefficient movements. So in a nutshell, and just very vague because we, haven't seen his swing, swing, I don't believe. Yeah, we haven't seen it. it it's difficult to say, but most often, golfers benefit distance-wise by becoming more efficient and really minimizing the curve they're putting on the ball from those shorter backswings. Yeah, and to Mike's point, I mean, we don't know, we haven't seen your swing, but nine times out of 10 for club level golfers, the longer backswing is caused by a couple of kind of issues that we like to clean up sure. anyway. Usually it's a narrow right arm or it's an over flexing of the wrist. That All that is doing is causing you more problems than it is good anyway. You're not gaining any speed from it. That's right. So stay a little wider with your right arm. Try not to over flex your wrist too much. That's gonna shorten up in its own. Add that to a little earlier shift, which most players need anyway. It's gonna shorten your swing and you're gonna swing it faster because you're getting the, you're in a more advantageous spot to start the downswing. Right, and when we work with our pros to, to shorten and tighten up their swing, we're doing it a lot of times with when the pressure moves. So it's not a matter of just saying, okay, is the club here or is yeah, it here? And yeah. just kind of physically trying to stop the arms from going that way. It's about creating the dynamic movement that really stretches and shortens that move, creates the tension and elasticity to poof, really blow through the golf ball. That's how the shorter swing can a lot of times produce more distance.